If you're in the market for a free stripped back bare bone CSS framework to use in Bricks Builder, you may want to take a look at Fancy Framework, what we're going to cover in this video. So I'm going to break this down into two different sections. The first one is I'm going to show you how you can set this up inside Bricks itself to get it up and running for yourself. And then we're going to take a very brief look and overview at what I think how this fits into the sort of CSS framework ecosystem we have as part of Bricks itself. So once you go over to the website, all you need to do is create an account. Once you've done that, log into your dashboard and inside your dashboard, you've got three different sections. These are the kind of three stages you have when you want to set up fancy framework in Bricks. The first thing is the basics of our spacing typography and so on. As you can see, it's pretty simplistic. There's not a huge lot going on here. If we take a look, you can see we've got our spacing set up for extra small, small, and so on. You can't actually add anything else inside you. So this is one of the first things I would like to see, a little bit more flexibility. It's not going to compete with something like Core Framework, where you have an awful lot more options to set up the typography, the naming conventions, and so on and so forth. So there's a lot more control inside this. But I would like to see a little bit of that brought into Fancy Framework to give us just a little bit more control. But you can set your minimum and your maximum values inside your community typography. Again, you've got your H1 through to H6, your text sizes inside here for the different sizes for your different custom headings and so on, your text styles and so on underneath, your color palette, so we can change this to something else. You may click inside here, just change this to maybe a green color. As you can see, it'll automatically generate then the various different shades for you, give them names, the different values, the transparency values, and so on. Same thing then goes for your secondary, your primary, your base, and your white. Again, I would love to see the ability to add in additional color palettes inside here because this is useful, but it is still relatively limited if you want to have a more expansive palette or to be able to kind of say you don't want transparent variations or maybe you only want to have three different color variations. You get the idea. A little bit more flexibility here would be super useful. Then you've got your gaps and your padding. So you can see we're using the variables inside here that are pulling in from the spacing that we've got set up right at the beginning. So it is using that. So if we adjust something inside the standard spacing, it will then have an effect upon the gaps and the padding and so on. You've then got things like your radius for your border corners and things like that. And finally, you've got your sizes then for your screen. So for example, I prefer to work with 1366. So if I set the value inside there for my container width, I can then pass that variable over into Bricks itself. You can also set up things like your logo width. So as you can see, there's not a huge amount of variables being created, but the base ones that you're probably going to need are being done. Like I said, I would love to see a little bit more flexibility in here. Once you've done that, the next thing to do is to download your variables. So we'll click, that'll download a JSON file. Now we can go into Bricks and we can insert these into the variable manager. So as we fire up Bricks, all we need to do is come into the classes and variables manager section. In this, switch over to the variables tab and we're going to go to the import option in the top corner, select the file, then select that JSON file we just downloaded. It then ask us, do we want to create the categories and put the variables into there? It's good practice because it's going to organize everything. So we'll say, yes, we do. And there we go. We've now imported 126 different variables in eight categories. Let's click Save and Close. And now you can see we've got our spacing, text, gap, style, and so on. So this replicates basically what we've seen inside the online editor in the Fancy Framework site. And as you can see, there's all of our different values using clamp, using rem, so we're using so let's just say we've got the basics inside here. So again, just make sure I'll save this, jump out. And now what we can do is we can go into our settings. We can come into our theme style. We'll create a new theme style. And we'll just call this fancy and create it. So now what we can do is we can start to use those variables inside our setup for our overall theme style. So for example, let's come down to our container. And when we set up the variable for our width, you can see the width is currently set to 1100. But what we can do is we can change that by right clicking. You can see we've got the options inside here. So we'll come into our sizes section. And from there, we'll choose the container width. As you can see, that pulls the variable value in, which in this example is 1366. So you can set up whatever you want inside here using those variables we brought in from Fancy Framework. Then once you're finished, you can just simply go and save this. And you can start working with those variables throughout your entire site. So for example, if we add a new section in, open up our container, let's just drop a heading in, for example, select our heading. And now we can come over and we can come into our styles. And from our styles, we can come into, for example, our typography. We can right click inside here. 
There's our text, so we can change things inside here. So we can say text is going medium, extra large. You kind of get the idea. The various different heading sizes, whatever you want to configure inside here. You get the idea how this works. So your spacing, your sizing, and all those kinds of things have been set up. We start to use those variables. So let's click on Save, and we've made some changes. One of the downsides with working in this way in comparison to something like Core Framework where you have the, the Bricks add-on plugin, which is a commercial plugin. You don't have that for free. You have to pay for that. If you make changes then inside the CSS variables, that will update throughout your entire site. With this, you then come in here. You've got to make your changes, download your JSON file, delete those entries from within the actual variable manager inside Bricks itself, re-upload and it'll upload the missing kind of pieces that you've taken out. It's a longer winded process, so you're probably going to want to spend time to make sure you've got this set up the way you want. But like I say, because you don't have that ability inside you to create new spacing, like new typography and so on, you're going to have to do some of that yourself manually inside the variable manager. So it's a little less flexible working this way. But like I say, you may only want something bare bones and stripped back. This may fit the bill perfectly. Okay, so let's take a look now at the color palette. We've already set our colors up, and as you can see, we've got our four key colors. We'll go and download our color palette. That's downloaded, so we'll do the same thing again. We'll jump back now into Bricks Builder. But this time, we're going to do this a little differently. We're going to open up our color picker. And from there, we're going to go and add in a new color palette. We'll click to import. We'll choose the file that we've just downloaded, which is our color, and click open. Fancy imported. So now what we can do is we can close that. You can then see we've got fancy created. So we can choose that from here. We can click on the little edit, set this as our default. Again, click save. And then we can do if we want to come back up to our default and click the pencil icon and delete that, save. And now we've only got our fancy palette inside you. So our color palette is now set up. And again, we can start to use these colors wherever we want. So we can just choose this. And as you can see, this is our variable primary trans 70. So it's 70% transparent, and we apply that. You kind of get the idea. There's nothing rocket science here. If you've ever used the CSS framework before, this is all very familiar. Okay, so now we've set up the ability to pull in the colors. We've seen how to bring in the variables. We now need to do one more thing to be able to see everything properly inside the editor. We're going to copy and paste the CSS back from our fancy frameworks. This is the third and final step. Everything's been created. Again, it's using, where applicable, the variables we've just created as our framework. So we're going to copy this, go back over into Bricks Builder. This time, we're going to come into our settings section. And from there, we're going to go to the custom code, scroll down to get the custom CSS, and simply paste this in and save. So now the variables that we've set up and all the things we've set up that are being used inside the fancy framework will now show up inside the editor, and we'll see things displaying correctly. So that's basically how you get it set up. We've seen how we can use this with our theme styles. We've seen how we can use it inside the editor. Things are sectioned up and organized quite nicely. And with the latest updates of Bricks Builder with the Variable and Classes Manager, it gives us that ability to easily manage those and integrate those into our workflow in the editor itself without the reliance upon third-party tools. So that's pretty cool. Now. That's the framework out of the way. What are my thoughts? Well, the first thing is, for free, I think it's a great starting point. And if you are new to working with frameworks, this is a nice, lightweight, easy way to kind of get your feet wet and find out, do you want to work with these? And if you do, maybe you want to expand what you can do here, maybe learn a bit more, or maybe take a look at one of the commercial frameworks like Core Framework, which is my personal framework of choice. I would love to see more features added into the editor so that we do have the ability to add more colors in, change the number of shades and things that are in there. I know we can do it in a manual fashion once you've copied the CSS in and the variables are there, but that kind of feels a little bit counterintuitive to use in something like this in the first place. So I would love to see a little bit more control over this. I know this is the initial kind of release of this. I'm sure we will see more flexibility as feedback is taken on board and it kind of develops and grows and people kind of start using it and adopting it a little bit more. Same thing goes for things like your gaps and your padding and your margins and things like that. Apart from that, though, I think it's a, a solid start. I think it's definitely worth taking a look at. Try it out on a demo site. See how you get on with it. See if this is something you could work with yourself. And if it is, maybe this is a stepping stone into CSS frameworks in general, or maybe this is more than enough for you. But as always, let me have your thoughts and comments down in the comment section down below. As always, all applicable links are in the description. If you want to learn more about frameworks, Bricks Builder, and everything else, check out this playlist here.
My name is Paul C. This is WP Tuts, and until next time, take care.